Hi, I'm Lynn Hinterbuchner from Austria, and I have the pleasure to have Angeliki Kolita from Greece. She's a radiographer. Um, we're going to be talking today about pregnancy in women, obviously just the women in the cath lab. So, Angeliki, thank you very much for joining me today. Why should a woman be worried about working in the cath lab? Do they really need to worry? Yes, I think that she has to worry about the radiation because she has to protect herself and, of course, uh, the fetus. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to think about the biological effects that uh, the radiation causes. Mm -hmm. uh, so she has to protect uh, the unborn child uh, in the first two weeks, in the, of course, in the first uh, trimester, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we may have uh, biological effects such as uh, a pregnancy loss mm -hmm. in the uh, first weeks, or we may have congenital malformations, mm -hmm. uh, of course, carginogenesis, mm -hmm. and, uh, of course, uh, development the delay mm -hmm. uh, after some uh, years. So she has to protect uh, and she has to worry about. Okay, very good. It's kind of concerning, but in my mind, as you probably would agree with me, when you protect yourself anyway, so anybody working in a cath lab, not just women that are pregnant, should yes. be protecting themselves. Of course. So if I'm protecting myself correctly, when should I worry? When should I be concerned? Okay, maybe I'm planning a child. When, when should we worry about that? Okay, uh, we have to protect ourselves at any time, even if we are pregnant women or not. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, the pregnant women uh, have uh, to protect herself uh, uh, before. If, if she thinks that uh, she wants to get pregnant, she has to think about and protect herself much more. Uh, and of course, the first trimester is the most important uh, period of her mm -hmm. uh, to protect uh, both uh, the fetus mm -hmm. and herself. Uh, so she has uh, to be ready if she wants to get pregnant and um, have another dosimeter for mm -hmm. the fetus and uh, be ready for all this uh, period of your life. So um, we've heard mentioned in out, um, you need a dosimeter. Yes. We always carry them outside. So am I correct in saying that you should have a fetal dosimeter, which is under the apron? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, apart from here, dosimeter, mm -hmm. uh, in front of uh, the lead apron, mm -hmm. we need, uh, of course, another dosimeter mm -hmm. in the fetus, in the, um, in the height of uh, our waist. Okay. Uh, apart from this, uh, there, um, we may have some extra uh, radiation protection, mm -hmm. uh, such as um, once she get pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, she may have um, a tailored, um, a tailored uh, lead apron yep. for her pregnancy. Uh, okay. uh, of course, we, um, in the cat lab, uh, we can have uh, an extra shield, yep. uh, one millimeter, uh, to protect herself okay. uh, from radiation exposure and the... Um, uh, scatter radiation right. that uh, a human body um, gives off. Gives, gives off, yes. Right. So um, it's important for them to use more shielding. Of course, more saying. shielding. We have to uh, use uh, and follow all the rules and regulations of radiation protection. Uh, and we have to think about the stochastic and deterministic um, uh, effects that uh, radiation causes. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, uh, um, we have to follow the three pillars in radiation protection, which is the justification, of course, optimization, and uh, those limits. And I, I want to say something about those limits. Mm -hmm. uh, in European Union, we have the European Directives. Mm -hmm. uh, the new European Directive 2013, and from uh, 96 uh, Directive, uh, we have uh, that uh, uh, during the whole pregnancy, the pregnant woman has to be uh, during the pregnancy, her pregnancy, less than one millisievert. Mm -hmm. uh, in the contrary, in the US, uh, we can say that uh, this uh, level is less than five millisievert mm -hmm. uh, during uh, her pregnancy. But uh, there is something that uh, I have to say about it, that in Europe, in the most countries of Europe, uh, does not follow this directive and uh, the pregnant women are out of the cat lab or some stay in the cat lab, not in the room, just outside uh, uh, and do other jobs, uh, other administrative jobs. Uh, but in the US, uh, United States of America, uh, the preg um, a pregnant woman can work in the cat lab, in the room. Mm -hmm. Wow. Being a pregnant woman way back many years ago in Austria, I was not allowed into the room. I had to sit outside behind the shield, yeah. do the hemodynamics, prep the patient, etc. Now, currently just working in the States, working with pregnant colleagues, so I see that. Um, do you think that it's a problem of the fear of the radiation or are we just not allowed to work in the cath lab? 
I think that the, the most of people has a fear of radiation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why. Uh, maybe they, uh, they, they don't have the knowledge, all the stuff in the cat lab. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they fear of that. Uh, and the, mo the primary thing that uh, a woman th uh, think about uh, in the cat lab is that um, is the fear of the fetus mm -hmm. and radiation uh, of radiation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why. Thank you very much. I think everything that we've talked about today, you, the audience, can look at the article that we have um, published here at the end of the, um, the interview. It's a new consensus which was in joint with the ERA, with EAPCI, Women is One. Mm -hmm. So we have the US, Europe, many countries talking about what the problems is and what we can do about it. Because yes, you can work safely in the cath lab by protecting yourself and we are using the right shielding, distancing, et cetera, that we all know. So please look at this article. It's a great combination of everything that's happening. And um, please look at it. There's um, a picture in there that you can use that you can print and hang in your cath lab to help people know what's happening. So thank you very much, Angeliki. Thank you. And thank you, audience, for joining us today. Thank you for this today. beautiful conversation. Thank you.